Hello and welcome to Waylanders Wandering, where I'm continuing my series on fast and effective paint jobs for uh, Loyalist Imperial Space Marines. And today I'm going to tackle one of the sometimes ignored, but many people think objectively are the only good guys in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, the Salamanders. Okay, and let's kick off straight away. And I'm going to take Citadel Contrast Warp Lightning and give him a nice all over coat on his armor. Trying to avoid areas we don't want green, but as I've said many times before, on this first go around. Doesn't really matter if you get a bit a bit sloshed on places that you don't want it. Again, we're going to be using contrast paints, and because we're using contrast paints and it's kind of warm still in the UK, we're going to have to be relatively quick because we don't want to be trying to move this stuff around after it started to dry. Because it really does ruin the surface. So I will carry on around this chap, bring you guys back in for the next stage. With that uh, warp lightning nicely dried, and you'll also notice I've gone over certain areas with Mechanicus Standard Grey and some areas in white. The uh, Mechanicus areas are going to be black or metallic, and the white areas are going to, well, essentially going to be not that or green, it's time to move on to the next stage, which is, of course, those aforementioned black areas. So I will be taking Citadel Contrast Black Legion and carefully applying it to all of those areas straight from the pot, being careful not to hit any of the warp lightning Though, of course, it is still possible to very quickly go over it in uh, white or an off white and paint them with warp lightning again just to tidy up. Ideally, for the larger areas such as the shoulder pads here, you want to use a relatively long paint stroke so that it leaves fewer brush marks in the surface and will make it look better in the long run. For other smaller areas, I will probably uh, switch to a smaller brush so I can get in easier. So, shoulder pads thus we will also be hitting the weapon casings here and here, all of these expansion joints on the armour. And I'll bring you back in when the uh, black has all been laid out. With those black parts uh, all dry and, and, well, quite nice actually, and very smooth looking, it's time to come in on the rest of the grey parts with Citadel Ironbreaker and Citadel Retributor armor. I would pretty much just be using the Retributor armor for his uh, Aquila and the butt of his sword there. And of course, the lead belcher. Pretty much everywhere else. So we'll start with the lead belcher, the uh, lead belcher, the iron breaker. And gently coming in, definitely making sure that we don't get any mess anywhere now. We're going to just Layer this on all those parts. This shouldn't take too long. There isn't very much of it. So I will do this and bring you guys in to have a look when everything's done. 
There we go. After getting all those uh, metallics done, I've gone over the silver, as you can see there, with a quick coat of the Vallejo Game Wash Black Wash just to uh, dull it back down again and bring back the detail as you can see on the side of his pistol there and down on the workings of the uh, chainsaw. So now it's time to hit up the areas that we painted white earlier. For our marine's leather work on his belt, holster etc we're going to be using Sizzle Contrast and Gore Grunt Fur. For the ribbon on his um, Fury Seal here, we will be using uh, Citadel Contrast Skeleton Horde. We will also be going over the gold areas just to reinforce the detail there. And finally, for the <coughs> eye lenses and the wax seal on his purity seal there we'll be using citadel contrast doom fire magenta so i will start off with the gorgrunt fur and as i've said before this is the time that we be super super careful because the last thing we need now just get a load of this on an area that we don't want it to. Because honestly, when we're nearly finished, this is the time to be super careful. This is the time when mistakes have the largest impact and are the most hassle to fix. Though, of course, they remain eminently fixable. There is no such thing as an unfixable mistake in a miniature painting. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So I will plod through with this Gorgonta fur and the other colours and bring you back in when it's time to add the decals. After a dig through Waylander's big bag of decals, I realised I don't have any salamander ones. So, I'm f going to well, borrow some from a friend. And in the meantime, I'm going to do that other bit that I've been doing on every other one, which is to get some edge highlights in. I mean, to be fair, you don't really need the decals. As I've said before, Kev from the Hobby Corner is doing a series where he shows you how to freehand this kind of thing. And I definitely recommend you watch his videos because he's very talented. And yeah, so anyway, edge highlighting. Where you can come in very thin at an edge of your paintbrush, 45 degree angle, or thereabouts, or whatever angle is comfortable for you, to be honest, and just stick a little line on all of your outward facing edges. You don't have to do every edge. In fact, every edge looks a bit weird, in my opinion. Definitely get the outward facing ones. And so for all these ones where you've got a big sticky out bit, which is quite a lot on a Space Marine, unfortunately, you can come in with your 45 degree angle and just like so come around. We can't get in with a brush in that such a manner, like uh, the top of his knee pad here. Brace yourself, elbows on the desk, hands together, and just come in with your brush and very gently pop a line on. So we pop a line on, whether it be horizontal or vertical, whichever is the most comfortable for you. If you need to extend the line, 
move the miniature not your hands so I will carry on with this I'm using uh, moot green by the way to highlight this fella so I will carry on with my moot green highlight as you can see from the paints on here I have uh, Dawnstone for the black Baylor Brown for the leathers and Stormhouse Silver for the metallics so I will crack on with this and bring you back in when it's all done and hopefully I will have my decals by the time of that and well indeed in time for the glamour shots at the end and don't forget you do not have to do these this edge highlighting the miniature was perfectly fine without it and would after basing be nice and graced any gaming table and there we go one salamander's assault intercessor all complete and looking rather spiffy if i do say so myself i've added a decal there for the chapter badge a little bit bubbly but uh, very old decals and unfortunately not as flexible as i would normally like but i also did the uh, flame effect on the right shoulder there which denotes him as being a member of a battle company there we go um i hope you found the video entertaining and you learned something from the techniques i've demonstrated if you didn't maybe uh, the next video or one of the others in uh, my skills to scale series will help you a little bit more if you did like the video don't forget to like share subscribe and comment down below equally if you didn't like it leave a dislike instead the paints that I used in the models themselves are all available from uh, Mighty Lanta Games in Bridlington, where I have an affiliate. And you buy from them, you'll get up to 20% off. And, which is great, and they will give me a little uh, kickback for sending them a new customer. Honestly, I don't know what else to say about this. It, I think it looks pretty spiffy I, I suppose Vulcan lives I've been Waylander you've been fantastic I love all your faces and goodbye